Million Bricks has been founded to address two major problems that we face globally. One is access to homes, and second is climate change. The house that you see here called Siena is a manifestation of what it means to solve these problems in a singular solution. The house itself has been designed with a key principle behind Billion Bricks' work, which is to never design poorly for the poor. And the solar panels on the rooftop produce about five times more energy than what this house would consume that can be sold to actually increase the home ownership or the ability for people to buy these homes as well. The goal of this model home is to bring in, show the technologies that we are developing, such as the roofing system, such as the uh, app, uh, such as the uh, construction technologies, uh, and over a period of time, how do we experience living in such a house and what does it do to people's life and lifestyle. Siena House was designed with three key principles in mind, and we did three kind of studies in order to come up with what you see here. The first one is we went to existing homes uh, that people live in, and how are they built, uh, what the developers are today providing, and how over a period of time those homes have evolved with people's lifestyle. The second we did is to go and look at what aspirational neighborhoods exist in the Philippines, Manila, including looking at images from across the world what is it that we see in television and we aspire our homes to be like that, but we can never get. And we brought in some of those elements to say, okay, we are not building for today, but we are building for tomorrow. And therefore, a lot of the time, people would also not know what they aspire for as well. And the third was really me, my aspirations as a founder, what is it that I want to provide uh, to the people and how the whole idea of billion bricks using home as a medium to change people's lives uh, bring them out of poverty in a single generation and larger vision and goals can be achieved through this house. So a few things that you can see here is firstly the material palette and the color palette that you see on the outside and the inside is something which is not uh, which is what you would find in higher end communities a little bit of warm color tones with white something that everybody can like and you don't have to be very peculiar in terms of your tastes etc and therefore is fairly versatile as well. Uh, the other thing that you would observe is a series of textures, uh, which doesn't cost a lot, but adds a lot of depth into visually uh, when you sit into these small spaces as well. Uh, talking about spaces, even though it's only 22 and a half square meter on one level, which is uh, even smaller than a lot of our bedrooms that we would see in our homes, but it's been configured in a way with large windows, doors, uh, parallel ventilation, uh, lighting, ceiling heights, the configuration of spaces, the inbuilt kitchen that you see here. So it feels much larger than what it actually is as well. And that's, I think, just kind of smart design and planning as well. And the third find, if you go into a detailed tour, is that how you can upgrade your lifestyle over a period of time. So you can buy newer appliances that can upgrade with your lifestyle. You have a TV screen uh, or you have a, a iPad, which is integrated into the house as well. If you take a look at the toilet, the whole organization of the toilet as well, uh, uh, with lighting and ventilation. Uh, and of course, never to forget the fact that uh, the solar panels on the roof itself create an experience on the second level, uh, which is very unique and different with more spatial um, uh, sense of space that you have. Plus flexibility, which as your families would evolve, as people will evolve, it would change uh, as well.